This video is sponsored by Wren. More on them later. In my previous video, I built a launcher that used electromagnets to accelerate paper planes up to about 26 miles per hour, which is quite fast for a paper plane. But I want to make it faster. With a purely mechanical launcher, such as my trebuchet, I can simply increase the size of the counterweight. Or with my flywheel trebuchet, I can just spin it faster. But increasing the speed of this launcher isn't so straightforward. An obvious suggestion would be to just increase the input power. But there's one issue. Electrical power is calculated by multiplying the voltage by the current. So increasing either of these will increase the power output. However, the on and off switching of the coils are precisely timed using a number of electronic components, all of which have a voltage and current limit, which the launcher is currently operating at. It seemed there was some confusion from the comments on my last video that I had built one of these, which works by shorting a metal projectile between two high power rails, creating a very strong magnetic field and launching the projectile. So as long as the projectile or the rails don't melt, the power can be increased for higher launch speeds. But with my launcher, I need to take a different approach. Between each coil is a magnetic Hall effect sensor that detects when the magnetic sled passes it, which is then used to time the activation of the coils. However, we can also use this sensor data to measure the speed of the sled by timing how long it takes to travel between each coil. And as they're all equally spaced, we can divide the distance by the time to get a speed measurement at 20 intervals along the rail, which also allows us to plot a graph of velocity versus distance. Each dot on the graph represents a coil on the launcher, and you can see the speed gained by the first few coils is huge, and starts to flatten out as the sled gets faster. Now I had a theory as to why this was happening, but as of editing this video, I now think I was wrong. In short, the RPM of a DC electric motor is limited by its input voltage, and because my launcher is essentially a linear motor, I thought the same thing was occurring. The theory is that the magnets passing a coil will generate a current in the coil, and once this generated current is equal to the input current, the projectile won't accelerate any faster. The only way to get it going faster is either increase the input voltage or decrease the voltage generated by the magnets passing the coils, which can only be done by reducing the number of turns of wire per coil. And seeing as I can't increase the input voltage, I decided to replace all the coils starting with the original 80 turns of wire in the first set of coils and reducing down to 30 turns of wire in the last pair of coils. So this is the first test of the new rewound coils. As you can see, got the super capacitors plugged in, got the computer ready to do the data logging. So I'm gonna press the launch button and wait five seconds. Four, three, two, one. That looked pretty fast. The data logging says 15.79 meters per second. That's, uh, that's what, over a 30% increase in speed. Not bad. So if replacing all of the coils resulted in a 35% speed increase, why do I now think my original theory was wrong? Well, if we open up an Excel spreadsheet, we can create a column for the distance, which is the distance that the projectile travels down the rail. We can also create a column for the acceleration and we can create a column for the velocity. In the distance, I'm going to put zero and then I'm going to do it in meters because I know each of the coil coils are spaced by 4.2 centimeters. So if we drag that all the way down to there, that should cover all 20 coils. For the acceleration, I know the acceleration is roughly 90 meters per second squared. So I can type that in there. And then for the velocity, we need to use uh, an equation, which if you've studied physics or maths mechanics before, you've probably heard of the SUVAT equations. They're essentially a set of equations that describe the motion of an object. For this instance, we want to calculate the velocity using the distance and acceleration. So we're going to use the equation V squared equals U squared plus two AS. So if I enter that into this box, solving for the velocity, we put the square root of the initial velocity squared plus two 
multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the distance between the coils because we want to calculate this thing for every instance uh, along the rail and I can drag that down and we get an end velocity of 12.29 meters per second. Now what's interesting is if we plot these values as a graph with the velocity on the y-axis and the distance on the x-axis, we get a very familiar looking graph. In fact, it looks a little too familiar. So let's copy and paste over the actual velocity data and paste it in this column, actual velocity. Now, if we import this into the graph, wait for it, it looks almost too good to be true. We have the blue line, which is the simulated velocity using that uh, Suvat equation. And then we have the orange line, which is the actual velocity, which was measured by the magnetic sensors on the launcher. And they almost perfectly line up. And this makes sense for the previous coils as they all have the same number of windings. So produce the same magnetic forces and therefore the acceleration is constant. But to be totally honest, I think I was lucky that the new coils were faster. This is because reducing the number of turns of wire would in general reduce the strength of the electromagnet. But fortunately, reducing the number of windings also reduces the resistance of the coil, allowing more current to flow, which produces a stronger magnetic field. Not only that, but after some research, I found that reducing the length of the coil also results in a stronger magnetic field. And if I calculate the relative magnetic field strength of each individual coil based on their length, I can multiply this by the known acceleration of the previous coils, resulting in another very familiar looking graph. For reference, here is the actual data gathered from the new coils. But there is one side effect of these lower resistance coils, and that's the current load it puts on the power source. In this case, I'm using supercapacitors, which are designed to handle high discharge rates. And I actually use these same supercapacitors on my four kilowatt e-bike. So they should handle a small paper plane launcher with ease. Fortunately, I can log the input voltage to the launcher using the main control board. And during the launch, we can see how much the voltage of the supercapacitors drop under load. Here you can see they are initially charged to 16.5 volts, and immediately drop to about 13 volts when the first coils turn on. And there's a very clear spike in the voltage between each coil switching on and off, which I thought was quite interesting as each spike gets closer and closer together as the sled gets faster. But what does this data show in terms of performance? Well, power is equal to the voltage squared over the resistance, which I know these first coils have a resistance of 0.16 ohms. So if the voltage stayed at 16.5 volts, we should be getting 1700 watts of power. But instead, at 13 volts, we're only getting just over 1000 watts. I then thought I should test my lithium batteries that I use for my electric bike. And just from the sound, I could tell the sled was faster. They were charged to the exact same voltage as the supercapacitors, but on average provided 20% higher voltage, which is a huge difference. And it's even clear from this graph that it was faster because the final coil switched off earlier meaning the sled reached a higher velocity of 16.42 meters per second. At the end of my last video, I mentioned that I want to have the coils not only pull the magnets along, but also push them. The only issue is that the electronics required to flip the polarity of the coils will massively increase the complexity of the system. So my cheat solution was to make a sled that has two sets of magnets, where one is a north pole that will be attracted to the coil, and the other is a south pole that will be repelled by the coil, effectively doubling the forward's force without requiring any more power from the coils. However, by doing this, we also double the mass of the sled. So even if the forward's force is increased, the acceleration is still the same and the end velocity isn't any faster. But whilst designing this double sled, I noticed the magnets on the original sled were slightly higher than the center of the coils, which could affect the strength of the magnetic attraction and it could also be pulling the sled downwards and potentially increasing friction. So I redesigned the sled with the magnets at the perfect height 
and adjusted some of the dimensions so it didn't wobble so much on the rail, allowing for the sled to be one millimeter wider so the magnets can sit closer to the coils, which I think should help as electric motors always have really small gaps between the magnets and the coils. This resulted in a top speed of 18 meters per second. So after changing all the coils, using a better power source and redesigning the sled, we've increased the speed from 26 miles per hour to now launching over 40 which is definitely too fast for a paper plane. So I designed a mini 3D printable glider that attaches to a sled using these mounting arms, which only allow the sled to pivot off with this direction of rotation. So even if the plane wants to take off before reaching the end of the launcher, like the paper planes did, it will be held down until the sled falls away. very much for watching this video whether it's uh useful to you or not i hope you found it interesting and uh, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below if you did find it interesting thanks to all of my supporters on patreon.com for making these projects possible i couldn't do this work without your support so thank you very much i guess i'll see you in the next video goodbye